The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Between Two Minutes on Ordinary Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. Well, I'll talk about this week, of course, Super Saturday, of course, some occurred, um, some big shocking upsets. We got to break down, of course, girls soccer, um, Rochester, we're going to talk about them, of course, they're up, I mean, like, we're going to talk about them. Um, also, some upsets in baseball, um, particularly what happened over at Birmingham Brother Rice and West Bloomfield, we're going to talk about that. Also, um, we're going to recap, of course, um. A state tennis championship, of course, in girls' tennis. Of course, Seaholm won the state title there, first since 2018. Behind their play of their um, doubles um, teams, obviously, against um, Grand Rapids Forest Hills Northern to Grand Rapids Forest Hills Central, um, beating both of them. Um, big accomplishment there for the uh, Maples, of course, winning that one. And then track and field, we're going to recap the state final. Of course, Oak Park, state champion in girls' track and field. Adams taking six, West Bluefield. Also had a really good performance as well. So, you know, we're going to break all that down this week here on this week's edition of the pod. Um, let's go to the big story here. Obviously, of course, um, obviously, of course, when you look at the um, the Shockers, I mean, like, and it started on Friday. I mean, obviously, when you look at, you know, there were a lot of Shockers. I mean, like, you know, and let's go with um, soccer first. I mean, obviously, when you look at Rochester, um, you talk expectations last year, this team got to the, um, final four big time expectations for them. 10 seniors, a lot of experience. Um, especially with the Rochester girls basketball kids that do play soccer. Of course, Natalie race. Um, you look at obviously, um, Alice Max at goal. Um, you know, they got a lot of girl and Ava Williams. Um, they got a lot of players who played, um, who lost to play girls soccer. Um, they got to the district final. And they ran in the third ranked Stony Creek, and Stony Creek pulled off one of the um, biggest upsets and shocked um, and shocked Rochester three to one in the district final. Um, when you really look at this game and looking at everything, how it did, I think the story told that there was one picture that really told the entire story of that, and that was Stony Creek holding the district championship trophy, and Rochester just sitting there. Just devastated, and you know, and I think you know that's the um, you know, and and it, it's unfortunate. It's sports, you know what I mean? Like you know, you know, and I and I felt real bad for the Rochester players. I mean, like you know, just seeing, you know what I mean? You know, just seeing that. I mean that picture. I mean it was it was stunning, but the game itself was also stunning too. I mean, you look at of course um, Lily Mosley, um, a Miss Soccer candidate for Stony Creek. Um, she scored a, um, she scored the first goal. Um, I mean, left side, I mean, went to the right side of Alice Max and just went in. And then there were a couple goals that I thought were just really odd goals that Max gave up. I mean, that was just really weird. Um, I thought the Lily Solik goal, um, that, I mean, like the Solik goal was huge for Stoney. I mean, like Stoney Creek really didn't take a lot of shots. I think they had five shots in that game. And I think in three and three of them went in. I mean they had one shot in the second half. Um uh, but that ended up being a goal. Um but it, that told you how much Rochester really dominated the play. Um controlled the tempo. I mean they they, they just dominated Stony Creek, but Stony Creek won when they won it when the game mattered. And that was the scoreboard. I mean so when you really look at it, um you know, Stony Creek was very opportunistic for the shots. They got two big goals in the first half, and then they scored that third goal, which was huge. Rochester's only goal was by Natalie Rice. I mean, Rochester did a really good, I mean, Stony Creek did a really good job in the second half, moving their midfielders back line to the de- to the defensive side of the, of the ball, you know, to make sure that, yeah, Rochester's going to try to to go inside and dominate, but it was going to be more time possession, more time more time possession, and that's ended up being the game. So when you look at it here, recapping the game, Stony Creek really, I mean, like Stony Creek, you know, they were very opportunistic with the shots. They found a way to win, and 
they basically like, um, you know, and they pulled off one of the biggest upsets in the state by sending Rochester. Now, it's unfortunate to see two top teams in the state having to play each other in basically what was what was considered the group of death. I mean, when you look at the teams that were in that district, I mean, you look at Utica Eisenhower, you look at Utica, you look at Lake Orion, you look at Adams, Rochester, and Stony Creek, all in one district. That's difficult. That is really, really difficult. And to get credit where credit's due, um, you know, you got to get credit where credit's due. And I think that, um, you know, you got to, I mean, like Stony Creek, they took advantage and they were very opportunistic. And to pull an upset like that against Rochester, a team that has a lot of experience, when you look at a team that has 10 seniors, that really says a lot when you really look at it. So credit where credit's due to um, Stony Creek. They're moving on um, to the regional over at Rochester, um, which is really stunning to say the least. I mean, like, obviously, um, where, um, where the regional will be at. Um, a couple of OA schools are also joining Rochester, uh, joining Stony Creek over at Rochester. Um, Bloomfield Hills, the defending Division One state champions, they knocked out Troy 1-0. Um, Bloomfield Hills, of course, using their defense, um, trying to rekindle that magic that they had last year when they won the state, when they won the state title last year. I mean, they're, I mean, like just, you know, timely goal. I mean, like during the game against Troy, I mean, Troy's a good team. They're a solid team. Um, I mean, like, it was a good win for Bloopy Hills, I mean, like, to, um, win their district, and then you look at, of course, some Troy Athens, no problem with Utica Ford, um, winning that one 2-0, um, over on their home field, so Troy Athens moves on, so when you look at that regional and girls soccer, um, you're looking at, over at Rochester, you got Bloopy Hills taking on Stony Creek, and then you have Troy Athens taking on, um, New Baltimore Anchor Bay is coming off, came off a big win in their, um, I think they knocked off Macomb, Dakota. Um, but I got to see who they knocked off. But it was a good win for the Tars. And the Tars and the Red Hawks, they, they have a history. I mean, they really do have a history. And that's going to be a really interesting matchup between New Baltimore Anchor Bay and Troy. This is going to be another really interesting game. Um, Stony Creek and, and Blue Bay Hills, it's a rematch. Of a three nothing game won by Stony Creek over Bloopy Hills. It was at Bloopy Hills. Um, I think that could go either way. I mean, like if 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 um, Bloopy Hills slows it down, you know, makes it a one nil game, then I think you got a shot. On the flip side, Stony Creek, if they keep playing, they're capable of playing. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see how um they do. Um, but I think, I think right now when I look at that dish, when I look at that regional over there, Adam Rochester, Stony Creek's got a good chance here. I think to, um, you know, I think to really make some noise. I mean, they have a chance to get the final four. I mean, that's how dominant the Cougars have been. I mean, when you look at it here, I think Stony Creek, um, you know, I think they get by Bloomby Hills and I think they get by Troy Athens and you know, and get to the regional in the regional semifinal. So it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. I mean, over that Rochester. So, you know, so my final thoughts on this for Rochester, incredible year for them. I mean, incredible two years for them. I mean, getting to the division one state final or state semifinal, but then having that disappointing first round exit, uh, a disappointing, um, district final exit, um, now last year's game was Stony Creek that came with penalties. So, you know, so it is what it is. So it's unfortunate that two of the top teams in the state having to play each other in the, um, in the district, um, final. And, you know, it's unfortunate how that occurred. So, you know, so good season by Rochester. Of course, we have three OA teams left. All three of them are in the same regional. So, We'll see what happens going forward there. So we'll see what happens there. Um, let's go now from softball. I know from girls soccer. Um, we're gonna recap baseball. Um, actually, let's go softball first. Let's go ladies first. You know, um, when you look at softball, 
and I think this is really interesting because recapping the districts, um, I didn't expect Royal Oak to win a district title in softball. I'll be honest with you. I really didn't expect them to go in there and win a district title. The fact that that team knocked off Berkeley 20-9 in the district final, that tells me how motivated they were. And I wonder if they watched my pod last week. Because when you look at the history of Royal Oak and Berkeley, it's not pretty on the Royal Oak side of things. It really is not. Um, but when you look at what Royal Oak, they were motivated at what happened to them last year. On that same field, losing to Berkeley in the district final, they were just humiliated by them. But when you look at this year's game, the fact that that game went 10 in, a game that, that only went five innings, and that was a 20 to 9 score against your arch rival? I mean, a lot of the pundits, even myself, picked Berkeley to win that district. A lot of them. Is it a is it a changing of the guard over there? Is this could this this district title win in softball by Royal Oak be the changing of the guard of that rivalry? I don't think so for a couple of reasons. Um, yes, it's a start in softball. It is a start, but when you look at this game. Royal Oak senior leaders took over that game. It was a difference in that game. Um, Berkeley, we know, is a very good team. I mean, they're a good team. Um, but, you know, when you really look at it here, Royal Oak, I know Royal Oak's been the butt of a lot of jokes, a lot of criticism, you know? I mean, you look at a course, and especially when you look at that rivalry with Berkeley. I mean, Royal Oak and Berkeley is a rivalry. But when you look at it, this could be a start. Do I think it is? We're going to find out. I mean, football, basketball, boys basketball. I mean, volleyball. I know Bro Berkeley's had Royal Oak's number in those three sports. Um, with the exception of girls basketball. Um, but, you know, maybe this could be a change of the guard. I don't know. But, got to give Royal Oak a lot of credit for what they've done in this game. In that game, they were motivated. They were ready to go um, and knocked off a really good Berkeley team and won a district title, their first ever district title as a school. So that kind of tells you where Royal Oak's been. Now they get to move on to the regional on their home field. and. I don't know if they're ready for this type of environment that they're going to be in. I just don't know. That regional looks winnable. It does. I mean, obviously you got Livoni Churchill in there. You still got to go through Gross Point North. Um, Gross Point North really won a district that was not as strong. It was not. I mean, it wasn't strong. And... They were dominant in their district. Detroit Renaissance had to survive theirs. 1918, the district final against Ferndale. That's insane. I mean, that is just absolutely insane. A wild scoring game between those two teams. But I just don't know if Royal Oak is ready for this type of environment that they're going to go in. I mean, they're taking on Lavonia Churchill. Churchill's not a bad team. But they're really not. But... Honestly, when you look at Livonia Churchill, um, they're going to be a team that I think is going to give them problems. <laughs> now, if Royal Oak comes in here, plays with the same energy, same confidence, same emotion they have that they did against them, um, you know, in the district, and they show that in this regional, if they win the regional, I'd be absolutely stunned if they win that regional. Because I didn't expect Royal Oak to make a long run in this thing. I, I really didn't. But, you know, 
It just, if they can keep this up, they got a good chance here. They have a great chance here. But I just don't know if they're ready for that next step against a very good Livonia Churchill team. I just don't know. Um, But what they did against Berkeley, is it a changing of the guard a little bit in the rivalry? Probably not. Um, But it's a start. But I'm curious to see how Royal Oak Sports, Royal Oak Athletics does against Berkeley and every other sport. When you look at, of course, football, boys basketball, you look at, a, I mean, yeah, I mean, girls basketball, you know, they got the edge here in girls basketball against Berkeley. Um, I mean, like, um, and then, you know, volleyball. I mean, like, when you look at those, three, those sports, with the exception of girls basketball, Berkeley's had Royal Oak's number. And... The stats prove it. They really do. So, it's going to be interesting to see what happens between Royal Oak and Berkeley as the rivalry keeps growing and evolving. Um, but for softball, you know, it's a big win for the Ravens. Um, first ever district title. Um, now they go to the regional on their home field. If they win a regional crown, then that's a statement. Then that's a statement that they're gonna that they're gonna be here a while, and a lot of that has to do with their seniors. A lot of that has to do with them. So that's my take on Royal Oak. I mean, that was one of the big upsets in softball. Um, and then let's go to Bloomfield Hills. I mean, Bloomfield Hills basically dominated their district. They really dominated. They were scoring machine. I mean, they were just beating. They beat Seaholm. I think 18-8, to eight, I think, was the score. Um, I mean, like, and then they knocked off, um, and then they won their district, um, you know, pretty convincingly um, behind their high-octane offense. Um, I thought Troy would beat them, you know, but I didn't expect Troy to just, um, but I didn't expect Booby Hills to just beat Troy the way they did. I just really didn't expect that to happen there. Um... So now Bloomfield Hills now is in the regional. Um, they're a scoring machine. I mean, they get Utica Ford in the um in the first game, which that's going to be a really interesting game. Um, when I look at Bloomfield Hills, you know Coach Dan Whitemire is a hitting machine. That team is a hitting machine. They can hit anything. But I'm going to ask myself this question. What if they run into a very good pitcher? I mean, no offense to the pitchers over at um in their district. I mean, maybe even the regional, maybe. But I think if Bloomfield Hills were to win that regional, um, then they're gonna have to see a really good pitcher in the quarterfinals, which would be really interesting. Um, if it was in if it was Region Eight, and that's who the winner of Region Seven takes on, is the winner of Region Eight. So, when you look at this match, when you look at Bloomberg Hills' chances, I think they got as good a chance as anybody to win this to win this regional. They got with their hitting machine. But if they run into a starting into a very good starting pitcher, they got problems. That's not a question. And on the other side, you got Utica Ford. Of course, they're coming off a um, nine eight win against Utica in the district final. They're coming off that in Utica. You know, they upset Troy Athens, and Utica what hadn't been very good, hadn't been great all season. They haven't been good. I mean, they've been around five hundred. Um, so as you know, you know, and they knocked off Troy Athens, so it'd be very interesting. On the other side, you got St. Clair Shores Lakeshore taking on Warren Regina. Of course, Warren Regina we know is a traditional softball power. I mean, even when they were in Harbor Woods, I mean, like they've always been. That powerhouse program. So, and Regina is starting to come back a little bit, which is really good for the league, which is really good for softball. Because, you know, the his, historically, Regina's been pretty good. Very good. And you look at, of course, you know, they made that move from um, Harper Woods to Warren. I mean, you know, and, and I think, you know, that's that's helped them. I really do. I mean, you know, when you look at the differences in the areas between you know, those two areas. So, but for Warren Regina, 
to get back the softball presence that they've been. I mean, it's a good thing for the league. It really is. Um, for the admission, it really is. Um, St. Clair Shores Lakeshore would be a very interesting matchup for sure for Warren Regina. Um, the satellites are going to be a very interesting, interesting out for anybody if those two teams play. It would be really interesting to see how those two teams play. It'd be be really interesting over there, at Troy Athens. Um, but I think Bloomby Hills is a real good chance in this. I I just really do think that they got a great chance in this thing. Um, Region Eight. This is over at Oxford. Um, you got Oxford. Well, you got Oxford, of course, winning their district. Of course, they knocked off a really good. Um, you know, they knocked off Davison, and then they knocked off. Um, they um knocked off Lapeer. And then had no issue with Port Huron. Um, so Oxford won their, won three games in their district on their home field. And their reward is they get to host Lake Orion in the regional semifinal. And that's a difficult matchup right there. Lake Orion actually won their regional, or their district, you know, knocking off water for Kettering and then knocking off Clarkston. So when you really look at the Dragons, um, you know, they were one of the favorites. I know they're state ranked. Um, kind of struggled a little bit down the stretch, but they're still here. So Lake Orion is a very interesting team. I mean, really happened. These two teams have played earlier in the year, and Lake Orion just dominated Oxford. Really did. Um, on the other side, you got Stony Creek and Macomb, Dakota. Macomb, Dakota won a crazy district over at New against New Baltimore and Bay that will be in the district final. Um, so when we look at it here, I just think that the Cougars, um, you know, the Cougars, they're coming in with confidence, uh, beat a really good new Baltimore Anchor Bay team. Um, they're not a bad team. Macomb, Dakota, we know has been a proven state power. Still are. Um, but then there's Stony Creek as well. I mean, Stony Creek, the red champ this year, relying a lot on their pitching. Their pitching has been really good. I mean, Aaron Flynn's a really good pitcher. Um, of course, a lot of a lot of people know Aaron Flynn from girls um from girls basketball. Of course, playing for Coach Kellen James. Um, it's gonna be interesting. I mean, and the last time Stony Creek and Lake Orion played, Aaron Flynn and um, the rest of that pitching staff they shut Lake Orion down. I scored him five nothing in two games. That's insane. Um, when you look at the um. But when you preview this regional over at Oxford, um, it's interesting. It really is. Because I think Macomb, Dakota, and Stony Creek, it's going to be a good game. It'll be a really, really good game between those two teams. It depends what style, what teams and styles the difference. Is it Macomb, Dakota's hitting? Or is it Stony Creek's pitching? Because if it turns into a pitcher's duel, favorite Stony, it favors Stony Creek. If it turns into a hitting duel, that favors Macomb, Dakota. So that's going to be a game of two different styles on that Saturday afternoon over at Oxford. Oxford, Lake Orion, you know, that's going to be interesting because it always is. The battle of 24 is going to be very interesting. Um, Yeah, Oxford's got home field. But Lake Orion, of course, has been on the road. and They've won games on the road. I mean, really have. So, when you look at it here, I just think, honestly, you know, I think it'll be really interesting. It'll be interesting to say at least how that will go. I mean, we'll see what happens. But it's a very interesting matchup, to say the least, in softball. I mean, you know, when you look at Lake Orion and Oxford, it'll be really interesting. Um, In this regional, if I had to project the team to win the regional, um, at all three regionals, I've got... Region 6 at Royal Oak. I got Lavonia Churchill winning that one. Um, sorry, Raven fans. I just think the Chargers are going to knock off the Ravens and take on Gross Point North. Um, and I think the Chargers have enough to move on. Region 7. I like Booba Hills. I mean, I think the Blackhawks, their offensive machine, I think is going to keep on running. And I think they're going to have a deep run. Um, and then Region 8, I like Lake Orion in this one. Um, I just think, you know, I, I think Macomb, Dakota is going to upset Stoney. Um, and then I think they're going to play Lake Orion. I think Lake Orion just has just enough. I mean, they, those two teams played each other in the middle of the year and Macomb, Dakota won on a walk-off 
Um, and, you know, I think those two teams are evenly matched. Um, so I, I like the Dragons in that one to get some revenge. And I think they're going to move on and win that regional. So we'll see what happens there. So I got Lake Orion and, uh, and Region 8, Blue Bay Hills Region 7, and Royal Oak, and I'm uh, sorry, and Lavonia Churchill in Region 6. So that's my take on softball. Um, let's look at baseball. I mean, recapping baseball, um, obviously the big stories in baseball, it has to be what happened over at, over at, um, over at Warrior Park in Troy and also at West Bluefield. Those are the two main stories there. Um, let's talk Seahome first. I mean, obviously, you know, obviously you look at Lake Warren, they're going to get a lot of attention, obviously. But when you look at Seahome, I mean, obviously everybody picked Burler Ice to win that, to win that district. I wasn't one of them. I picked Seahome because I thought Seahome's pitching would be just enough in there. And they had some pitching. I mean, behind the pitching of Kyle Robbins and also Colton Keeney. Of course, Colton Keeney, of course, is a, um, of course, is, we all know Colton Keeney from football. And Seahome's going to be one of those teams I'm high on next year for football. Probably have Jim DeWald on the pod in a couple weeks um, for football call-ins. We're going to start doing those again. Pretty soon, we're gonna do some foot. How um, everybody's been doing around the OA when it comes to football. So we're gonna do that in a couple weeks. Um, but when you look at the game here, how it describes Seahome, you know, trailed two nothing early to bring in Brother Rice. Um, battled back, clawed their way back. Um, it was three three at one point, and then they took the lead. Um, made a pitching change from Rollins, I mean, from Robbins to Kinney. Um, two different styles. Um, of course, Rob, Rob, I mean, Robbins, of course, the hard hitting, hard, um, is hard, the hard thrower. Whereas Kinney's a little bit more of a more creative type, you know, with his pitches and all that. So, but when you look at Seaholm, um, you know, to win that virtually on the road, that says a lot. Um, Big credit where credit's due for Seaholm um, winning that game against Birmingham Brother Rice. Birmingham Brother Rice is a team coming in riding a lot of confidence, and they were riding a ton of confidence. Um, so give credit where credit's due there. Um, I think I just think the Warriors, you know, I think the Maples finding a way to win that, even when even when their pitching wasn't the was on par, uh, wasn't the greatest um, like they've been in the past, but. See Holmes on the next round. So that's bottom line. They, and they went and they did it at Birmingham Brother Rice's home field <coughs> in Warrior Park in Troy. Now, I mean, there's there's schools in Birmingham. Um, but I just wonder why are they playing their games at Warrior Park in Troy? I mean, you know, but, you know, it is what it is. So, but anyway, congratulations to See Home on that one, pulling off the upset. Of Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, they were ranked the third ranked team in the state um in Division One. Um, let's go now to a district at West Bloomfield. And perhaps this district nobody expected, maybe with this with a few, maybe, that Lake Orion would go and shock, would go in and beat West Bloomfield. One nothing in eleven innings, um, in the region in, in the district semis. You kind of knew that game was gonna go either way, but Lake Orion found a way to win that one. But I think the big one people are gonna say about the Dragons are gonna remember this team is what happened in the district final. I mean, taking on the number one ranked team in the state, fifteenth ranked team in the nation, in Orchard Lake St. Mary's, um team that's been riding a lot of confidence, defending Division I state champions. I think they're the two-time defending Division I state champions. Um, have about 12, about 10 to 12 Division I prospects on that roster. Um, Lake Orion, of course, I know has got at least one. I know who is looking at going to D1 college for baseball. Um, but what they did Winning that one three to two, I mean, and that says a lot about this team. 
considering where they've been at. I mean, let's not forget, Lake Orion, they were ranked in the state early in the year. But then they went out a terrible stretch. Late in the year, they went into a terrible stretch. I mean, where they were struggling, um, just no flow, no confidence. But, you know, when they got in the turn when they got in the tournament, I mean, nobody expected Lake Orion to do what they did. Nobody did. And, you know, everybody was, you know, everybody looked at that district and said, okay, it looks like it's gonna be Orchard Lake St. Mary's, you know. You look at West Bloomington. West Bloomington took two or three from Lake Orion in the um, season series. But Lake Orion found a way, won a pitcher's duel in 11 innings, and then stunned probably much the biggest upset in the state when they stunned Birmingham, when they stunned Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Orchard Lake St. Mary's, we mentioned, you know, has got, and I think the play at the end of the game really said it best. Um, run around third, two outs. Um, top of, bottom of the seventh. I think they got India. I, I mean, Orchard Lake St. Mary's got their Indiana commit batting. Um, and then he forced them to pop it up, and then and Lake Orion center fielder had to make a diving catch. Game over. Game over. Celebrations over at West Boom And it was a stunner over there. It was an absolute stunner. I mean, to see that type, that team, who's battled consistency problems all season long, to pull up one of the biggest upsets in the state is stunning Orchard Lake St. Mary's. That says a lot right there. It, kind of, it says a lot right there. So, for Lake Orion, you know, now the sky's the limit for them. Now it is. I mean, now you're riding into this regional, this regional format with house money. You're heading into White Lake with a lot of confidence. You know, going in there, virtually a road game. I mean, if you're Lake Orion, you're in a good spot right now. But you get, you still got to come in hungry and ready to go. You just knocked off the defending Division One state champions. You just knocked off the, um, you know, a perennial state power in Orchard Lake St. Mary's in the district final. Um, other teams that are in the di in the regionals as well. You got Berkeley. Berkeley won their um, district on Friday, knocking off Warren um, Warren Mott pretty convincingly. So actually, it was six to five. I mean, it was a tight game between those two teams. Um, so Berkeley now moves on back to Royal Oak to play um, to play um, Warren De La Salle, which that could be a really interesting matchup there um, for the Bears taking on the Pilots. Of course, Warren De La Salle. Not having the greatest of seasons, but here they are um, competing um, in this regional there. Um, and then you have, um, and then you have on the, um, and then of course you have Rochester Adams. Of course, Adams, um, they won their district pretty, um, pretty convincingly. Um, knocked off, um, they knocked off Romeo. Uh, actually, Utica, I thought they knocked off. Um, to get there, um, obviously Adams, we know the experience they got with Parker Pico, um, both Pico brothers. I mean, we know how good that they are. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how Adams does. I mean, a lot of people talk about Rochester Adams potentially having that deep playoff run. Um, I think they could have a great run if things go right, you know, for them. Um, could you just imagine if a quarterfinal matchup happens between Lake Orion and Rochester Adams. That, that could happen in Port Huron. I mean, that could happen. Um, but we got to see. I mean, like, I mean, everything goes. You got Wednesday night. You got Wednesday we're at Lakeland. For I mean, like, when all the um, state um, super regional semifinals start um, between those teams. Um, and then you have, um, and then you have Troy Athens. Of course, Troy Athens won their, um, their district beating Troy nine to five, and they steamrolled um Utica to get to this matchup um with Rochester Adams. So when you look at previewing these matchups, and I think obviously 
it's going to start, you know, you look at it. We're going to have Berkeley D.S. South first. I mean, Warren D.S. South coming off a one nothing win against Frazier in the district final. Berkeley's got a ton of confidence, um, as we mentioned earlier. Um, I, I just don't I, – I, I like Berkeley in this match against Warren D.S. South. I just think that the Bears, the familiarity of being at Royal Oak, that's a big deal there. Um, I, I think it'll be very interesting to see what happens there. Um, but I, I really like um, – I like Berkeley to move on to the um, regional final. Um, region 12 at Warrior Park in Troy. You got Seaholm taking on UD Jesuit. I really like the Maples in this one. I just think the Maples um, end up pitching, obviously. You have the Keeney brothers. You have Kyle Robbins. They have, they have some offense, obviously. Um, so when I look at this matchup here, um, and he just knocked off Birmingham Brother Ice, the team who I think is much better. You know, you're taking on um, – UD Jesuit, when you look at the Catholic League, obviously you look at the three top teams in that in the Catholic League being eliminated if you're including Novi Detroit Catholic Central, who just fell to Novi um in the um in the district final. So when you really look at it here, I mean like um Novi, they they're a dangerous team as well. I mean, they got some guys that can pitch. I mean I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, we will see what happens there. I mean, like, so but I really like in this one here. I I, I like see home the knockoff UD Jesuit. Um, Region fourteen at Avondale. You got Adams taking on Troy Athens. Um, in this matchup here, you know Troy Athens is riding a lot of confidence. They're riding high with a lot of confidence that they're knocking off um Troy and Utica. But this is going to definitely be their toughest opponent in Rochester Adams. I mean, obviously when you look at Rochester Adams, they are loaded. They are talented. You know, they got experience. They've been red hot lately. They've been playing really good baseball. I mean, this Adams team, you know, let's remember, this senior class at Rochester Adams has been very, very good. You know, you look at, of course, they are looking for another state mitten, another heart, another state mitten. I mean, they're, they are they have a great chance to do it. Um, in this game against Troy Athens, though, I like Adams in this one pretty convincingly. Um, the winner of that one's going to take on either Graham Blank or Davidson. Um, Graham Blank's coming off that upset win against Clarkston, um, 5 nothing. Um, and then, of course, they stunned Holly. Of course, Holly stunned Oxford um, in their district over there at Oxford. Um, so it'll be interesting to see um, how that one goes. Um, but I do like, um, but in that matchup there, I do like, um, in this matchup here, I like Adams to knock on Troy Athens. And then you have Lake Orion taking on Lakeland. Um, Lakeland, we know, has been solid off season long. The Eagles have been really, really good. Um, and, they are, and they're at home, which is a big deal. Um, but I think Lake Orion right now is the most dangerous team in, this, in the field right now, considering, obviously, who they just upset. Um, when you upset Orchard Lake St. Mary's, of course, you, you're throwing everything out the window now, um, obviously, with what the Dragons have done. Now, the weakness of Lake Orion, obviously, is going to be consistency. Is can they keep this momentum going? That's the big question for Coach Andy Tramick. Is can the Dragons keep this momentum going? If they do, then don't be surprised if they are at Michigan State. I mean, if they keep that momentum going, because it wouldn't really, it wouldn't surprise anybody if they're at Michigan State with the way that they played. Knocking off a very good Orchard Lake St. Mary's team um, in the district final. Knocking off a very good West Bloomfield team. The fact that this team had allowed only 10 hits, two runs, that says something. That really says something in, that, in those two games against those two state-ranked teams. Now, Lakeland is ranked eight in the state. So, when you really look at it here, I mean, Lake Orion, let's not forget this Dragon team, they were ranked in the state prior to, before they got into that losing streak. They were ranked in the state. I mean, they were, I mean, early in the year. Then they fell off a little bit when they struggled. And then now getting this momentum back, you know, they got this confidence back. They got the momentum back. That's a big deal. I mean, and if Lake Orion can keep that momentum going, make sure they're, make sure they step it up a notch like they're more than capable of then I think this team can be very dangerous. You know, I, it wouldn't surprise me if Lake Orion, it would not surprise me at all. If Lake Orion, if they can win this regional, 
if they can knock off Rochester Adams, um, it would not surprise me with the way that this team is playing, with the way their confidence is, if they stay loose, they stay focused at the task at hand, then it wouldn't surprise anybody that the Dragons would be heading to Michigan State. It wouldn't surprise me anything. It really wouldn't. But for Dragon fans, it's one game at a time. I like them in this game against Lakeland, even though it's on the road. I just think Lake Orange played a tougher schedule than Lake, Lake, Lakeland. I mean, Lakeland had to survive Wall Lake Western in the district semifinals. Um, but I like the Dragons in this one. Tougher competition, tougher schedule. Um, it'll be interesting to say at least over at White Lake. So we'll see. I mean, we will see what happens there in that matchup there. Um, let's go now to boys golf. Of course, the state final preview is coming up. There's three teams in the OAA that are representing coming up this weekend. Um, you got, I mean, know by Detroit Catholic Central Bank State champion. They're one of the favorites, um, to win the, to win it again this year. Um, Adams, they shot a 306 in their regional. Um, Lake Orion was second with, um, 319. They got a great chance to win it. Also, let's not forget the Dragons are the defending 2019 state champ of the 2019 state champions. And Bloomy Hills, they were third in that region. All three were in the same region um, with a 326. I mean, Seaholm barely missed out on the cut. Um, you know, they were the fourth ranked team in their in their region. Of course, the top three go to state. Um, so, but they had two individuals who missed out. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Be really, really interesting to see what happens this weekend. I mean, clearly, we're going to see what happens there going forward there in that one there. Um, let's go now to um, recap. And, of course, obviously, the, um, you know, we're going to recap, of course, the state final and um, tennis um, for Division um, for division 2. Obviously, Seaholm um, took home the Division 2 state title. Um you know, let's actually go to lacrosse first. I mean, lacrosse, I mean, you got boys lacrosse. You got, um, you know, you got um, Clarkson taking on Brother Rice, um, Birdman Brother Rice. Um, Clarkson had no issue with Lake Orion in the, um, in the, re in the um, quarterfinals. Um, they just destroyed Lake Orion 16 to 5. Um, just insane. Um, I mean, like, I was surprised with the faceoffs. Obviously, Clarkson was dominant there. Um, and, it, and it showed, I mean, they scored early and often. They went on runs. Um, it just, honestly, Lake Orion really didn't stand, st didn't stand a chance in that one. Just really didn't. Um, so now the Wolves move on, take on the Warriors. It's going to be an interesting match to the least between those two teams. Um, I think Lake Orion, I think that, um, I think Clarkson's got a shot here to make history. I mean, Birmingham Brother Rice, ever since the cross has started, has made has made or at least won the state final. Um, Clarkson's got a chance here to really say, you know what, Birmingham Brother Rice, you had a nice run, you know, nice run, but it, it's our time to shine. And I think it's I think they got a good chance to do it. I, I really like where the Wolves are at. They got depth, they're disciplined, um, well coached. Um, they got a very good face on man. Um, I just think, honestly, I think the Wolves can do some damage here. I think Clarkson wins this one over Birmingham Brother Rice and moves on to the state final. Um, where they'll probably see Novi Detroit Catholic Central, um, in the state final. I think Clarkson's got a great chance to get there, um, with the team they have. So, we'll see what happens. I think the Wolves got a great chance here to do very, very well. And then on the girls' side, you got Bloopy Hills taking on Brighton and girls across. Um, Bloopy Hills, they knocked off Birmingham um, in the um, regional final to get here. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this matchup goes. I mean, I think that the um, Warriors, I think that the Bulldogs, you know, last year, of course, Brighton knocked off Bloopy Hills on their home field. Um, and... Unfortunately, Bloomby Hills fans, I do see more of the same in that. Um, I got to give the edge to um, to um, Brighton. And I think Brighton will move on in that one. Of course, that game is being played at Brighton. Um, you know, and it'll be very interesting to see how that one goes. And 
it'll be interesting to see how that one, you know, plays out. But and then the winner probably will likely see Grand Rapids Force of Eastern, who took out Rockford, um, on the other side. So it'll be interesting to see how that one goes. Um, now let's go to um, recap and of course girls tennis. Obviously, we talked earlier about congratulating Seaholm. Um, it was their first state title since 2018. Um, when they captured the um, Division Two crown over at Midland, um, Seaholm they scored 32 points. Um, mentioned earlier, snapping of course the three-year reign of Grand Rapids Forest Hills Northern. <coughs> the Huskies and their arch rival Grand Rapids Forest Hills Central um, scored 27 points each. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the difference in that was their double teams. Um, of course, you know when you look at tennis, obviously you have singles, you have doubles. Um, the doubles were the big difference here in that matchup, obviously, um, with um, the Maples winning three of the three of the four matchups. Um, and funniest thing here is all three of the teams had, um, you know, were coming in tied, entering day two with twenty two points each. So it w- it could have went either way. I mean, obviously, you know, with Grand Rapids, you know, with both Grand Rapids schools, four Hill schools, and then of course you had um Seaholm, of course Seaholm, finding a way to win that. I mean, like, really, you know, just they really found a way to win that one. I mean, like, and they um, they won it with their double teams. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at it here, big props to Seaholm for winning it, um, for winning the Division II state title, first time since 2018. Um, North Farmington was 7th with 11 points, and Berkeley was 11th with 9 points in Division II. In Division I, um, Ann Arbor Pioneer was, won it with 32 points. Troy was second with 25 points. Clarkson was third with 18. Bloomby Hills was fifth with 17 points. Adams was eighth with 12 points. Stony Creek was 14th with seven points. And Troy Athens went 17th with five points. So, you know, so when you look at tennis next year, obviously you still got to look at the, those teams that are going to be really good next year. Um, I'm going to be in the thick of that conversation there. Um, also, track and field. I mean, obviously, when you look at track, um, the state meet was held this weekend. Um, Oak Park. Um, Oak Park won the Division um, one state title. Um, after last year, they ended up losing to Detroit Renaissance. Um, but they had an impressive... Their dominance in the hurdles really showed in this meet. Um, you know, of course, Roundtree. Um, they did just enough in the 800. Um, and then, of course, in the sprint relays, they did just enough as well. So Oak Park won it with 80 points. Um, Detroit Renaissance was second with 58. Ann Arbor Pioneer was third with 56. Farm Sales Mercy was fourth with 32 points. And Rockford, Rockford was fifth with them um, with them um, 27.5 points. West Bluefield was tied for sixth with Wall Lake Central with 24 points. Detroit Cast Tech was eighth with 22 points. And Zeeland East was ninth with 20 points, and East Lansing rounded out the top 10 with um, 18 points. Um, Groves was 13th with 15 points. Um, and then you have Rochester was 18th with 11 points. Um, and then, of course, you have um, Royal Oak was tied for 22nd with 8 points. Um, Farmington was 30th with 6 points. Um, and then Clarkson was 41st with 3.5 points. Um, Bloom Bay Hills was 42nd with three points. Um, and then Berkeley was also tied 47 with two points. Oxford was, um, you know, and that was the field and the girls' side of things. So when you really look at it here, obviously for, you know, when you look at the season that they had Oak Park, you know, Oak Park, when you look at the Knights, I mean, they kind of struggle in league. They kind of really do. And I think a lot of teams, they have a lot of depth. They take advantage of Oak Park's lack of depth. Now, Oak Park says they make up for that lack of depth with quality. Sometimes it doesn't always work that way because here's why. It's a dangerous concept if you look at it here with quality. You know what I mean? I mean, when you look at lack of depth. um, And I think this is where I think Oak Park, you know, gets themselves in trouble with. Is their lack of depth, you know, it comes back and bites them. You know, if you put them in a national meet, they're going to have some issues. Because they don't really have the, you know, they, they have the quality of talent, 
but sometimes quality and quantity always doesn't always work itself out. And I think that's where I think could be a big problem for Oak Park in the future. Now, what helps Oak Park is they got a good class coming in in girls. I mean, their girls' um, middle school program, Oak Park Academy, they won the middle Oakland County Middle School track meet um, on Thursday night at Clarkston. Um, Scripps Middle School, a um, Lake Orion, was second place, um, you know, in that meet. So when you really look at it, you know, for Oak Park, I mean, they got more in the pipeline coming in. They got the hurdles figured out. They got the sprints figured out. Now it's going to come down to is do they have some, they got, they got to get some field events there. Um, Cause if not, they're going to struggle. I mean, I think it comes down to is the quality and quantity. You know what I mean? It's that debate for coach, um, for coach Giles and them over there at Oak Park. Um, and they got a lot of questions over their Oak Park anyway. I mean, lack of depth, you know what I mean? That could be a big time issue for them going forward there when they look at the Knights. Um and then you look at of course on the boys side, um St. Joseph won the um boys team title, scoring forty point seven five. Chippewa Valley was second with thirty eight, Rockford was third with thirty six, Ann Arbor Huron was fourth with thirty points, UD Jesuit was fifth with 29 points. Adams was sixth with 28 points. Kalamazoo Central was seventh with 26 points. North Bill was eighth with 25.75. Um, East Kentwood was ninth with 25. And Celine ran out the top 10 with 23 points. So when you look at the OA, obviously Adams taking six um, behind their, um, their um, relays. Um, Demarcus Rouse had a really nice year for Rochester Adams. Um, Oak Park took 15th with 17 points. Troy was tied for 19th with 10 points. Um, and then, yeah, Berkeley was tied for 31st with 6 points. Um, Abendale was tied for 36th with 5. Royal Oak tied for 44th with 4 points. West Bloomfield was 49th with 30, tied for 49th with three points. Um, Clarkston tied for 54th with two points. And Oxford um, was 65th with, with um, zero with them um, with 7.5 points. So when you really look at, when you really look at the boys side of things, um, Adams was the best away team all year long. And they proved it, you know, winning the, Oh, winning the red title, winning the red white meet, um, taking home a regional title. Um, you know, they did a lot to prove, you know. And I was a little surprised they didn't score as much as I thought they would in this meet. I mean, 28 points is pretty good showing. But, you know, when you look at obviously, you know, with St. Joseph's, obviously, you know, with not, I mean, give credit to St. Joseph's, they're a solid team. I mean, but I'm just shocked that St. Joseph's really, you know, they get credit where credit's due. I mean, like, they are a good team. They are a really good team. Chippewa Valley is another good team as well. I mean, so when you look at next year for track and field, I mean, it'll be very interesting to see what happens. I mean, really, really interesting to see how these teams go. I mean, like, how things are going to go um, as we head into the, um, as we end the final stretches of the year. Um, obviously we previewed, um, we previewed the regional for girls soccer. We previewed, um, we previewed girls lacrosse. We pre boys and girls lacrosse. We previewed everything else. Baseball, softball. Um, we previewed that. Um, and also previewed boys golf, which I think is going to be, it'll be another very interesting weekend coming up. I mean, like, obviously when you look at the teams that are still in it, um, still competing in it for the um, for the titles um, for the county crowns. I mean, I mean for the regional crowns this week for um, girls soccer, um, baseball, and softball. Of course, baseball will be in their quarterfinal rounds after Saturday, after Sunday. Um, softball will be in their um, they'll have their quarterfinal round next Tuesday, and then they will have the um, and then of course you know soccer will have their state final. Um, soccer, baseball, softball, other state finals being held um, next weekend. Not this upcoming weekend, but next weekend. 
And then, of course, that'll be it for the um 2022-2023 school year. So when you really look at, you know, you know, uh, when you really look at it here, I mean, like, we're still in the final stretches of the um of the season and the postseason, obviously. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward. So we will see what happens going forward. Um, we are still keeping an eye on the um, boys basketball situation at Rochester Adams and also at um at North Farmington. I I got some sources that are that are telling me about the um Adams situation. I will once Adams confirms their um new hire, I will break that on the blog at Saginaw Bay Forty Six Fifty at blogspot.com. I have um I do have a um hint who it is going to be, but Adams has not confirmed it yet. So you know, so I haven't wrote it in yet. So, so just give me guys a head up. I know Adams does have a coaching place here, but it is not yet confirmed who is going to be over there as their new head coach over there at Rochester Adams. North Farmington, what I've heard for girls basketball, um, that they were going to have a new head coach being named at any set, any day now. Um, so it's something to really, really watch for. So once we have their head coaches, we're going to, we're going to talk about it. Um, as we head forward, so we'll see what happens going forward. Obviously, the um, you know, we got a lot to talk. We got a lot ahead of us here. Obviously, um, we're gonna start also doing our um, we're also gonna start doing our football talks with coaches um, within the next um during this month. So we're gonna also start that probably either next week or maybe in two weeks um when the um season when the um season does end so you know so stay tuned to that so we will um have that um you know we'll see how everybody's been doing for um as we get ready for the um high school football season coming up next fall so a lot to really look forward to um as we head into the summer um still been working on the football previews obviously for the blog um so we'll see what happens going forward there all right we're gonna sign off here uh make sure you follow the blogs at tagging up 4650 at blogspot.com I have also posted the blogs on the Orion Neighborhood Television site as well. So if you want to take a look at that, it's orionontv.org. Um, so, you know, take a look at that on the news section. So we'll see what happens as we head forward. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. Take care. And I'll see you all next week. God bless everyone. God bless everyone.